And then down here, we have a source directory platform folder. Don't know why I'm pointing with my finger. You can't see that. It's called a glob, which is just wonderful. Um, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week on the Game Engine series, we're going to be taking a look at creating a platform independence layer. And what that means is we want to anonymize all of the underlying systems underneath the game engine. Uh, we don't want the engine to care whether it's running on Windows or Linux or whether it's using Vulkan or OpenGL. Everything that the engine does should be exactly the same. Every call to the engine should function in the same way. Uh, this is something I didn't take very seriously in the initial iteration of the Alkahest engine, but after doing some research I really want to get this nailed down early so that it's not a hassle later on when I want to start implementing more cross-platform features. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel or liking the video or leaving a comment to tell me what you think about the game engine so far or features that you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Uh, doing all that really helps the channel, it helps please the algorithm gods, uh, and it helps me get feedback on what I'm doing to know if I'm making good videos or good code or any of those things. Uh, so I'd really appreciate it, uh, and uh, let, let's get started. As we're continuing to build a more and more complex application, i.e. the game engine here, things are going to start having different implementations based on what operating system we're running, what graphics API we're using. So the purpose of the platform abstraction layer is to separate out the logic and the code that is used by the rest of the engine from the individual implementation details of a specific object. Uh, the best example for this is going to be the Windows system. Essentially, with our Windows system, right now we're using OpenGL. And now OpenGL is cross-platform, so theoretically it wouldn't need to be abstracted out of the way. We could run with OpenGL on any platform we want. The main issue with that, though, is that OpenGL is not the best graphics API for any given platform. Metal is the proprietary Mac OS graphics API. We've got Direct3D on Windows, and then OpenGL is Linux, but also Vulkan has started to come out for all three as like OpenGL++, essentially. It gives a lot more control to the developer to do a lot more advanced things and be a lot more efficient about it as well. So OpenGL is kind of our baseline and we want to abstract that away so that in the future when we are developing for Windows and implement Direct3D or we decide to start implementing Vulkan all of the actual logic that the rest of the engine uses like create a window, update the window, resize the window, close the window, those things are exactly the same for every single different platform that we're going to be using. So let's dive in to how the platform independence layer for the Alkahest engine is going to work. Uh, jumping right in, we're looking at the platform independence layer. For any given computer, we don't know what operating system we're on. We could be on Windows, we could be on Linux, uh, we could be on Mac. We've got no idea. Uh, there are ways to query this in the software, but if we're trying for every line of code to execute it differently depending on what platform we're on, our code's going to get really, really jumbled up very, very quickly. So instead, here's the approach that we're going to take which is to say that in our build system, which is CMake, we're going to just query what operating system we're on. There are a couple of ways to do that. The easiest is by looking at what compiler we're using or look if that compiler has specific flags set, but either way. So if we query what OS we're on, we're gonna get Windows, Linux, Mac, or something weird. But we're only gonna focus on Windows, Linux, Mac. So. What we're going to do is, if we get Windows, then we're going to just have a variable that we set to Windows, right? Uh, if we get Linux, it's going to be Linux, and if we get Mac, it's going to be Mac, 
or something like that. Uh, and so this variable can then be inserted into paths in the build file so that things are grabbed properly. So the way that that's gonna work is when the compiler is looking for which files to include, there are gonna be two things. In the headers, we are going to have uh, an if defined for Windows, Linux, and Mac here. Uh, and that's gonna include Windows platform specific or Linux platform specific header files, right? So that's gonna be in the include folder in the header files. And then we also have our actual source files, the CPP files. For those, we actually build a big container in CMake of all of those sources. It's called a glob, which is just wonderful. Um, but anyway, this file glob for anything that is platform specific, the source is going to be our source directory in a platform folder, like just generic source slash platform. And then we're going to actually include the platform, right? Uh, so that's gonna let us separate our Windows code from our Linux code from our Mac code. And that's really only going to be relevant for things that have to be platform specific. Things like logging or uh, base types, things like that, those aren't platform specific. They're not going to be in the platform folder, but for things like our graphics API or anything like that, we are going to be using the platform folder. So we're gonna go ahead and get that set up quickly and I will meet back with you with some code. So I have finished implementing the platform detection setup. Uh, so you guys can see here, I've just created a simple macro with CMake. Uh, and what that is doing is just testing the built-in Win32 or Apple variables. There's also a Unix variable, but we're kind of using that as the fallback down here. If Win32 is set, that means we're compiling for Windows. We're gonna set a target platform variable and also output a message to the console. Uh, we're doing the same thing for Apple, and then Linux, like I said, is our fallback. Uh, I did leave myself the option, essentially, of setting multiple variables. I may need those a little further down the line, uh, and I may also create another macro for setting a uh, compiler definition for Windows, Apple, and Linux builds. Undecided on that so far, but with that in mind, uh, you can see here, all I've done is include that file called a macro, and then down here, we have a source directory platform, and then the target platform variable. So, if we check out our source folder over here on the left, you can see our platform folder. We've got Apple, Linux, and Windows, and they each have a sample.cpp file. So for each of those, all that's doing is setting a platform string as a proof of concept. And then in the init file, all I've done is define an external string with the same name, uh, and that just lets the compiler know that it's defined somewhere else, I don't know where. And then in the main function, we run log info for the platform, and that just prints out what the platform variable is set to. Now I'm running Linux, as you guys may or may not know. If I run that, I do still have that failing assertion from the last video setup, uh, but you can see here I'm seeing platform Linux. The platform detection is running properly, and that's gonna be it for this video. So we've got our platform independence layer up and running. Next time, we are going to work on starting and stopping subsystems within the engine. Uh, hopefully that video is gonna be pretty quick to come out. I've already got a lot of the footage recorded, uh, and so hopefully I will see all of you guys soon. Uh, once again, if you haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel, throwing a like on the video if you made it this far, you stuck around for some reason. Uh, and so I will see you guys next time. But we're only going to focus on Windows, Linux, Mac. I don't care about the rest of it. Uh, everything else is basically Linux anyway. Unix. Whatever. And I will see you guys in a bit. Nope. Uh, so, now I'm running Linux, as you guys may or may not know. Let's do a quick... You know what? I don't really know that I need... that. <laughs>